junkyard for a jeep engine. Now, why did I buy this engine? I actually bought this engine just a couple of days ago. There's a video about it, me driving to a junkyard, you know, far away, picking this thing up, bringing it back home. I bought it because I suspected the engine in my MR2 actually developed rod knock. Unfortunately, I was right, that engine has rod knock, and buying this thing was a good move. So, what we are going to be doing today is two things. Number one, I will be taking this thing apart, you know, taking a look inside. Right now this engine is kind of seized, so I want to see the condition of the crankshaft and the pistons and everything else. So we will be removing the head and all these other bits to, to free up the block and, you know, take it to a machine shop. Before that, I actually want to take just a bit of your time to talk about the 4AG engine family in general, to explain to you where this particular 4AG fits inside the 4AG engine family and also to clear up some of the confusion related to the different types of 4AG engines out there. So, we have the 4AG Toyota engine. I don't know if you can see that well. I think you do. So, all 4AG engines are 1.6 liter 4-cylinder engines. The overall division is in two categories. We have 16 valve engines, this is what came first, and then we have the 20 valves. This is what came later. These are then divided into the silver top and the black top. Now this is very clear, there's no confusion here. Where the confusion comes is with the 16 valve engines. There you will hear people if you go to the forums, you know, or talk to somebody, you will often hear the distinction red top and blue top. Now that is wrong and confusing and I'm going to explain to you why. The actual division of the 16 valves is not this, it's big port and small port. And now the big ports are then divided into early ones and the late ones. Now here is where you will hear people saying a lot, saying blue top and red top. The early big ports that have the blue lettering on the valve covers are called blue tops. What, what blue tops are essentially is they have three rib blocks which are not as strong, not as rigid as the late big port blocks, actually also called the red top. Now the problem, the confusion arises with the red top, blue top thing because judging an engine just by its valve cover is very, you know, very hard. Two reasons. Number one, reason number one is these are almost 30 year old engines now. People have been mixing and matching parts and you have Frankenstein engines out there made of parts from two, three, four engines. And you also have engines that have been produced in the years when Toyota was moving on from the early to the late big ports and they have also been mixing and matching parts. So people sometimes say I have a bolt up engine. What that should mean is you have a three rib block and you have the 40 millimeter crank journals. Now you look at the valve cover and you assume that. Sometimes that is not the case. You may have a blue valve cover, blue lettering of the valve cover, but you end up having the seven rib block and you may end up having the 42 millimeter crank journals, you know, for your rods. So the real distinction that we should be making when talking about these engines to avoid confusion is saying I have an early big port or a late big port. Now, all the big ports have twists. This is the very, very early variable intake thing Toyota was doing. All of these big ports have that. And the early big ports, the so-called bull tops, have 40 millimeter journals for your rods. And the late ones have the 42 millimeter journal for rods. Excuse my handwriting, I know this is horrible. I don't know if you can see that, you can see that. And the small port, what's different with the small port? There's no 
T vis vis T. I don't know how you pronounce this. There's no that, and they also have the stronger block, just like the the late pick ports. So that's it when it comes to the 4AG engine family. I hope this wasn't too confusing or too boring. I try to keep the, keep this as short as possible. So now we're moving on to my new junkyard 4AG, and I'm going to show you where it fits inside this. Okay, so here's my 4AG. Now, if you look at it the valve cover carefully, you can actually notice a few little remnants of bow paint there and there. I have no idea if that is visible, that one's visible. There's a bit there too. So judging by the valve cover, this thing should be a blue top. Now what are we going to do now is I'm going to start taking this thing apart and we're going to see exactly what we have in the block and what the block looks like. So we're going to see if this indeed is the typical bow top. Okay, here are the camshafts. Okay, nothing too weird or concerning there. Looks good. Moving on. I just noticed that some genius that has been working on this engine has messed up the camshaft caps position. This says on it the number, you know, the position where it should be. It also says which way the cap should be facing towards. And also says whether it's intake or exhaust. So this is exhaust and here I found intake number three and this is exhaust number four, which is wrong. It should be exhaust number two. So we have some clear evidence of mechanical moronism right there. Pistons. Now, cylinder number one and piston number one look the best by far. The bores don't seem to be too bad, although there's a bit of rust. Number two is similar to number one, with actually a bit more rust there on the bore. And number three is a total nightmare. As you can see, this has rusted into oblivion. And this is the reason why the engine has seized and it's impossible to move the crank. And number four is a bit better, but still quite a nice chunk of rust there. Here's a look at the block. Here you can see the ribs. And we can count them together. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. off and I'm seeing some metal shavings. Here's another big one. It's actually metal shaving. Okay, this is never a good sign, but I'm gonna keep tearing apart and see what I'll find next. <laughs> Here's 
an explanation for those metal shavings. This is all that's left of the rod bearings. Look, look. The rod bearing and the crankshaft journal actually fused together. Look at this thing. This is in a condition that is so much worse than the engine that actually has rod knock in my MR2 right now. I have, I have no idea if this engine is even salvageable, if it's even worth trying to rebuild. Looks pretty bad. The next step is going to be dropping the engine from my MR2. Right now when I think about it, the engine that's in there and it has rod knock looks a lot better than this piece of junk. However, the Junkyard 4AG still isn't such a big disappointment because I still managed to get it for pennies and I got with it a working distributor that fits with the MAP sensor thing. I got a wiring harness for the MAP sensor thing. I got an ECU for the MAP sensor. I got an intake manifold and throttle body that, that work with that whole setup. The head also seems to be pretty good from that engine so maybe I can use it someday. So all in all, not a complete failure, but nevertheless not as good as I expected. So what's the plan now? I think I'll be grinding down the crankshaft in my engine that's in my MR2 right now, because that crankshaft, the only thing that's bad with it is actually the rod bearings and everything else with that engine is pretty great. So that's what I'll be doing in the next couple of videos. I'll be dropping this thing as I said, and then taking that to the machine shop and whatever. Right now, I'm just going home, gonna take a shower. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe. And see you next time on the D4A channel.